Hello everybody, welcome back to Fifefield Junction and today I'm bringing you another how-to video and this one I'm hoping it should be um, hopefully I reckon a lot more useful and a lot and a lot more people will probably find it uh, helpful um, <laughs> compared to some of the other videos uh, I've done in the past. What we're going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be showing you a uh, step-by-step how to fit a CD motor kit into a Lima HST. Um, I have done other videos in the past of me fitting uh, the CD motor kits to models, but none of them were actual proper how-tos. It was more me actually just doing more just general work or upgrades to the loco. None of them actually properly focused on um, and in detail a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually fit a CD motor uh, to these models. Um, now, I am going to be showing you, showing you how to fit it uh, to the Lima HST, um, which is probably going to be one of the most common models that you'll end up upgrading with these with these kits. However, the skills uh, should be quite easily transferable to lots of other Lima, uh, Lima models, because most Lima models, um, not just HST, but also like their 47, their 37, 50, loads of their models pretty much use uh, the same or the very, very similar uh, mechanism um, which is just the typical pancake motor slash ring still ring filled uh, style uh, motor bogey, and because of them, because a lot of them use that pretty much pretty much use the same motor and that same sort of design, you should be able to quite easy, easily transfer uh, those skills uh, from this uh, from this model if you're not doing this particular model onto another model. Um, now the kits that I use, um, if I grab it. All of the kits that I use come from Strathpether Junction. I have used quite a lot of his kits in the past, um, and I have done quite, I've upgraded quite a lot of models um, already um, using these kits. Um, he does loads of different kits. Um, all, I literally have no affiliation with him. I'm literally just a satisfied customer. But he sells loads of different kits, um, all for various models. Um, he does wines, obviously the HST, which is the uh, generic uh, style Bobo, um, I believe, style uh, kit for the Lima models. Um, I believe these are the 12 uh, volt motors, uh, yet, uh, yet 12 volt DC uh, motor kits. Um, he also does ones for the Coco style Lima models, which again is like the 47, 37, etc. Um, all for ones that use that uh, to type of motor. Um, because while the motors are near enough the same, the kits do have to be slightly different um, because the motor bogey itself is, the, I think, it's slightly smaller on these models compared to some of the other ones, uh, which is fair enough, I suppose. Um, so the kits are ever so, ever so slightly different. Um, I think the motors might be slightly different sizes as well. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I think they are different in that um, obviously the one with this, these models is 12 volts. I think the ones that come with the Coco uh, Cocoa diesel kit, I believe they're 9 volt motors. Um, so they have to, you have to be slightly more careful with them because they're designed for a lower voltage, well, lower voltage, lower voltages. <laughs> it's quite a handful to get that out. Um, but he also does other kits. He does ones for Hornby uh, models as well, so Hornby Ringfield Motors. And now they are quite different uh, to this um, in that obviously with those models, because the actual motor bogey frame and everything is made of metal, um, they're a bit more different because you have to worry about insulating the motor casing from the actual motor bogey frame and everything. Um, so there's a little bit more with that. So I wouldn't recommend using this video if you're doing a Hornby uh, Ringfield kit um, upgrade. Um, and then he also does ones, I believe, for this few other models. He does one, I think he does O gauge ones as well for O gauge Lima, Lima, like the Lima 33 O gauge. Um, and I think there's a few others he does as well. Um, but the main ones uh, that you're likely going to be using is ones for either Lima Coco diesels um, or Lima Bobo diesels. Um, and they also do the ones that goes with this model. I believe there's a couple of different steam um, locos as well that this kit um, is also suitable for. Um, if you go, if you search up his kits on eBay, um, in the description he does list all of the models that the that particular kit um, is basically cap capable of basically upgrading. That's um, it's basically compatible 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 with. Um, but today, um, obviously, we're doing HST, so that's one that we got here. Um, now, obviously, the Lima HST itself, um, it's uh, well, it's not it's not a bad model, I suppose. It's obviously it is old, but it's not too bad. And um, now you don't have to upgrade. The motors in these if you don't want to. Um, I'm certainly unlikely going to be doing any more anytime soon um, and there's certainly no point doing it especially if the motor in yours runs so so well. If it's really smooth and really quiet um, which one of my Lima HSTs is it, it runs so incredibly well um, but if your motor for example either it's just not running quite as smoothly as you like it to 
or maybe you've bought one and the motor's just completely gone already anyway. Um, or in general, um, even though the model, model runs really fine, it's nice, it's good running and everything, but you'd still feel like upgrading it, um, like, which is what I'm going to be doing here. Um, and obviously you can go for it. And I do recommend doing it because it is really worth it. It's these motors, they do run really well. They are much better. Obviously, you're not going to be, it's not going to be completely silent because you'll still have the noise from all the gears. But the motors themselves, they are much better, a lot smoother, a lot quieter. It's definitely worth the upgrade in my opinion. And they are a lot easier than it may seem. I know some people do say that these can be quite hard to do, but trust me, especially with these kits, these are very, very easy to upgrade. It really does not take much effort at all. So you need a few basic skills and you can do it quite easily. Now, obviously, before we, need, we can even start fitting the kit, we obviously need to get inside. And obviously, usually on the HSTs, you'll take out two screws underneath on these models. However, with this model, I've already did, this model has already been DCC fitted and everything by me. Um, and it's had a few already had a few of the internals already taken out so to make some room um, so i didn't actually have to take out any of the body screws on this because i've taken out these screw holders completely on the inside so on my one all i need to do is just unclip the body and to take it off and there we go and you can see inside if i show you inside the body you can see uh, hopefully roughly see where those uh, screw lugs are used to go um, but we can put that to one side because we don't need body obviously until back right to the end again and there we go and this is how the model's inside obviously again your model may be different so you may not have dcc'd yours yet and um, if you want to know how to dcc these um, i recommend going to look at some going to look at some of my other dcc fitting videos um, i don't think i've done one on the hst itself um, off the top of my head but i have done one um, on the lima 47 i know that and if you literally use that you should be able to quite easily use that video and that should be able to quite easily uh, show you basically how to do this one because again Lima models a lot of them you do use the exact same mechanism pretty much so it's really really easy on this um, but if, if hopefully I can explain this nice and simply um, just in case um, I hope you'll be able to get it um, obviously on analog with these HSTs there literally is only two wires inside um, by default and analog with these it's literally just one wire from the front bogey, there'll be one wire from the back bogey, they go to each side of the motor. It's literally just a case of disconnecting those two wires from the motor, um, removing the capacitor, which I haven't actually done yet on this, I didn't even realise when Optiman upgraded it. I forgot to take the capacitor out, so I'll probably do that, um, well I will do that when I do the upgrade anyway. Um, to take that out, then you just need to wire the two pickup wires that used to go to the motor, wire those to the black and red on the decoder, then the orange and grey from the decoder, they can then come off and they can go straight, on, straight onto the motor. Obviously with my model, I've done it with an 8-pin socket, so just, to make, just to make the thing a bit better and to make, make swapping in and out decoders easier, um, should I decide to change it in the future. But again, it really is really easy to DCC these, and if you want a, a specific, a more detailed guide on how to DCC these models, um, I'm sure there's others on YouTube that you can find um, if you want to uh, find out exactly how to DCC this particular model. But anyway, we're not talking about DCC today, we're talking about how to upgrade the motor. Um, now one thing is, um, with these motor kits, is not all of them um, are designed um, for, if, especially if you're going to be running this on analog um, or running it on a decoder, it doesn't have a lot of um, functionality that you can't edit a lot of the CVs on. Um, a lot of these motors aren't designed uh, for 12 volts. Um, again, as I said earlier, the co one for the Lima Coco diesel is that's only designed for 9 volts. So one thing is with these motors, if you're going to be doing this upgrade, um, especially if you're going to be running it on analog, I'd recommend wiring in um, one of the diode voltage droppers. Um, the Strathpether Junction also does um, does sell. You can buy those as well. Um, they're literally just a few different diodes, and they basically help drop the amount of power that you're basically applying. If you're going to be applying quite a lot of power to this motor, then basically wiring that in, all you need to do is just wire it in between the motor and the basically and the pickups uh, between the track. Just wire that in, um, obviously on both on both rails, and that will basically um, drop. I think it takes about one volt um, or so um, off um, the amount of power that you'll actually end up applying to the motor. So it will decrease the amount of power that goes to the motor, or to make it, it will make it last longer. Um, and obviously it'll make it run a bit slower as well, which should be good as well. Um, but if you're going to be running this on DCC like me, um, one thing I'd recommend doing is choosing a decoder that you can edit CVs 2, 5 and 6 on. And that is basically the start voltage, the uh, mid speed and the max speed. 
Um, and if you use decoder that does that, that means you can basically edit um, and basically change the amount of power that the decoder supplies uh, to the motor. Um, and it will basically make it again, it will make it last longer because you really don't want to overload these motors um, because obviously that will be a big headache if you do. And you really want to make them last longer because obviously really these motors, they're not designed for model trains, are they? They're, well, they're designed for DVD drives and stuff. Um, so yeah, they're not really designed for, um, well not all of them are, some of them um, like this one should be able to handle 12 volts quite well. But I really do recommend um, checking around uh, and doing some research to just to make sure that the motor that you're going to be using can handle the power that you're going to be giving it. Especially considering if you're going to be putting one of these kits in, for example, a big Lima diesel, like a Class 60 or something, and you're going to be running it at quite high power and going to be coupling it up, coupling it up to a big rake of wagons, which is going to put a lot of strain on the motor, you really want to think about, um, I really do recommend uh, thinking about either, again, on analog, putting in a voltage drop, a diode voltage dropper, or on DCC, using a decoder that you can uh, decrease the amount of power that you'll supply to the motor. Um, so yeah, I know it's I know this is quite a lot, quite a lot to take in, but I do feel it is really important. So you don't you really uh, want to know um, as much as you can um, before doing one of these upgrades to ensure that you're not that what you're doing and basically what you're going to be running the loco with that you're not going to end up uh, burning the motor out uh, too easily or too quickly. Uh, but in this case, we should be fine, especially on a HST. Um, it's obviously it's going to be hauling a big rig of coaches and stuff, and you're going to be running it at high speeds. But um, especially if you're going to be running it with Hornby Mark 3s, like I will be, um, they don't have a lot of drag to them. And these Lima HSTs, they've got plenty of weight to them, plenty of traction. So you shouldn't really be putting an awful lot of strain on the motor. Um, but still, I would recommend, again, doing your research and ensuring that you're um, basically well prepared um, for doing one of these upgrades. But anyway, before we can fit the kits, what I'll do quickly is I'll take the kit out um, and we'll have a quick look at it. And then we'll go into a bit more detail about um, how we're going to fit it and everything. Um, we will need to remove the motor bogey fully from the chassis um, to do this, um, but I'll probably do that off camera because it's just a case of um, desoldering a few wires, um, unscrewing the bogey frame and everything. But anyway, we put the motor, to, put the motor, to, well, put the chassis to one side, and we'll have a look at and we'll have a detailed look at the kit itself. Okay, so I've turned the camera around uh, to a bit of a better angle so you can get a bit of a closer look um, at the kit itself. So inside the kit, um, you get the obviously the motor itself, um, which is a, it's a nice uh, high quality uh, 12 volt. Uh, I think I believe it's still a three pole motor. Um, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure these are still three pole motors, um, but they're nice high quality motors. They will serve you very well for a very long time if you do do look after them. And they, obviously again, they will be much much better than the original Lima um, pancake motors, which we're obviously going to be replacing. Now, along with the motor, you get the adapter itself, and this will fit in nicely into the uh, basically into the shell of the motor bogey. And once we remove everything from it, it will fit nicely in place. The motor will sit inside that, and it will line the motor up uh, perfectly uh, with all the gears and everything, um, so that um, listen, you don't have to worry about lining the motor up yourself. The um, 3D printed uh, converter will do it all for you. And then we also get some heat shrink tubing so we can insulate uh, the connections to, uh, between the motor wires and obviously the wires that we'll solder onto. Then we also get, if I turn it around, you can see there we get a couple of gears as well. One of them is just a spare, you only need one of them. And obviously this gear will sit on the motor shaft itself and then that will obviously engage with the, um, obviously the old factory gears um, on the model itself on, on there already. Um, now the gear does need trimming down slightly um, before we can basically put it in its final position on the shaft. Um, it's just by design, um, I think it's just the way these gears are manufactured, you just need to trim off a little bit of them um, so that they're basically cut down to the right size. And um, again, nice and easy to do, and obviously I'll show you how to do that when we fit the kit. Um, but that's it, that's all you get. It's literally not much in here, but again, you don't need much for this. But we'll just put it open so we can get a closer look at all of the bits inside. So let's grab my craft knife. Just. Gently try and test and cut this open. There we go, should be okay. There we go, let's get rid of that. We'll tip all the bits out. There we go, we can put all that to one side, so we don't need that anymore. And there we go. So we can see all the bits here. So we've got the motor itself there. Obviously, we've got its wires coming off. We've got that there. We've got the adapter itself. Again, this is just made of, uh, it's just 3D printed. Um, obviously it can handle some decent temperatures, but again, you still want to make sure 
that the motor doesn't, doesn't get overly hot. It shouldn't get hot enough to melt the plastic. But again, just want to be careful uh, about that. So again, just making sure. Um, I know I've said it a lot, but I really just must stress, you do, do not want to overload these motors. You really need to make sure that you're not going to be overloading them too much at any point in time. Um, obviously, we've got the heat shrink tubing there as well. And then we've got the two gears that obviously sit onto the shaft. Well, obviously, again, only one of them because the other one's a spare. And obviously, one of them will just sit on the shaft. And again, that will perfectly line up uh, with all of the all the other gears on the motor bogey already. Uh, so that's the kit there. Again, obviously, not much in there, but obviously, <laughs> what else do you really need? All you really need is the motor and everything, really. Not much else that you need. So that's all, all what you get. Um, the kits aren't too expensive. They're about £15 pounds, um, plus to Plus a few pounds for postage um, and, and so I know some people might think that's quite expensive but I think for what you get that's not too bad considering how long these last for obviously again like well basically with any model really if you look after it properly again keep the motor serviced uh, make sure you put a bit of uh, oil on obviously on the gears and everything make sure you've serviced it well look after it and these obviously this will last you a lifetime um, again like all other motors they will last you forever if you look after them and service them regularly but anyway, that's the kit there. So what we can do now is we can grab the motor bogey from the model and I'll show you basically how to take out all um, all of this stuff from the motor bogey that we don't need. Then I'll show you how to put the kit in, how to line it and basically how to line it up, how to trim down the gear. And then we can put it all back together and we'll see how she works. Okay, so here we are. So I've removed the motor bogey from the HST. So we can see it all here. Obviously we've got the connection there, which the pickup wire soldiers onto. And we've got the pickups obviously underneath. Um, I might give those a quick clean, I suppose, once I've washed, I've got the model apart. Um, I'll probably do the wheels as well. But we can see, obviously, we've got the motor, the motor itself sits here. We've got the brushes. Uh, well, the brushes are well, obviously inside, but we've got the, you can see the springs underneath there. Then we've got the actual contacts. Obviously, we've got the left and right hand side of the motor, which your two motor wires solder onto. And obviously, on the other side there, we can see you've got all of the gears as well. Obviously, the piece that holds the gears in place. Uh, and that's it. Obviously, it is a very basic setup. But it is reliable. These ring filled motors, well, ring filled motors, sweet, these are technically the pancake motors on Lima models. If you service these and look after these, these will last you forever. They are bulletproof motors. It's pretty much impossible, really, uh, to burn these out. So they are very, very reliable. But again, as long as you look after them, they will serve you a lifetime. And they do run very well, again, if you look after them. Keep them clean, keep them oiled, keep them lubricated. They will last you forever. But obviously, for some people, including me, uh, you want something that's going to that's a little bit smoother, a little bit quieter, um, a bit more reliable. Um, so obviously we're going to be upgrading it. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to undo these two screws, and this will allow us to get to everything inside. So just grab a flathead screwdriver, undo the screws. Uh, now you want to keep these because you will need these again later, um, because these will hold the adapter itself but in place. Just undo them. Uh, they're not very big screws, so you don't have to turn them too much to undo them. There we go. And then now, you should be able to lift this up. Like the springs uh, might uh, might ping away as you do this, uh, but you should be fine. You need to undo this one a little bit more. And then it should come off. There we go. Uh, one of the springs is still inside. Um, but there we go, so we can see inside now. So we've got, obviously, the brushes there. Um, just tip all that out. And obviously, if you want to, uh, at this point, if you if you wanted to, um, you could just throw these away if you want to. But um, I wouldn't see why you want to do that, um, because obviously, well, look at them. They're perfectly brand new brushes, uh, pretty much looking at them. Oh, <laughs> screws to swollen out. Uh, if I just take out uh, the other spring here, if I can. Um, it's a little bit stuck. There we go. Let's put that uh, to one side. So we've got all of these springs and everything there. Uh, screws have gone <laughs> everywhere. That's one of them. Where's the other one gone? Oh, there it is, just on top of the motor there. Let's put that to one side, so I just don't want to lose those. Uh, so the brushes and the springs at this point, I recommend, um, and it's what I do with all of the um, bits that I remove from these motors when I do these upgrades, is I recommend just putting them in, into a little bag and putting them in storage and just keeping them safe, because you never know if you do, um, for whatever reason, at any point, want to put the original motor back in, you can very easily do that. So this upgrade is not permanent, uh, so if you do want to put the original motor back in, then you can quite easily do that. Um, these, are any, or pretty much all of these upgrades, and with these motor kits that you do, they're not permanent. You can quite easily put the original motor back in if you want to, and um, so there's no permanent uh, chopping or anything that we have to do. 
um, we'll just put the brushes, uh, brushes and springs over to one side for now and I'll put those into storage later. So the next thing to do is just take out uh, the armature and everything. So that's quite easy, just grasp it and it'll pull out. Obviously you can have a bit of resistance there from the magnets, but that just comes out nice and easy. So we've got that there and this obviously this looks pretty much pristine, um, a little bit dirty. Um, but pretty much, uh, well, in good working out, good working, good working, good working order, really. Yeah, struggling, struggling to get my words out as usual. But there we go. That's that there. Um, it is quite dirty, which is quite surprising because I did uh, fully clean and surface this when I first got it, and it's barely been ran since then. Um, but oh well, that's fine. Uh, give that a clean and put it in storage later. And then the last thing uh, we need to do is just remove the magnet. So the magnet isn't really held in by anything. It's but almost just clipped in the way there's not really anything holding it in place permanently so it is well loose as we can see but that supports that quite easily um on some models I mean, it might be a bit harder than that I wasn't actually expecting it to come out of it that easily um uh, well i was saying that it's probably a bit easier on on these um on some other models um i think the for example the lima uh, obviously the lima coco diesels um the best thing to do is because the mo well this is the main bit here that that sits holds the magnet into place that little bit just slots up inside there and that's essentially what holds the magnets uh, in place. On the Lima Coco diesels, it can be a bit more difficult to get these magnets out. So what I recommend doing is just, if you can't get it out, just get a small flathead screwdriver, gently uh, squeeze it in between the outer plastic motor casing and the magnets. And just very, very gently and ease it out. And it should come out quite easily. Obviously, you don't want to prep, um, press or put it, push it too hard, because you don't want to damage this outer casing. Um, if for whatever reason you do damage any of the magnets or anything, it's not the end of the world because obviously you're not really going to need it again. Um, well, it's unlikely you'll need it again anyway. Um, but you really want to make sure you do not damage this. Um, anyway, we'll put the magnets to one side because that's it. And that's everything that we need to remove. There's nothing else we need to take out now. So all we need to do now is uh, fit the new motor. So if we just put uh, that to one side and we can grab the adapter. Now the motor just uh, does have to go in um, a certain way. Um, so um, obviously it needs to go in, obviously that's the way it's going to go in, it's going to sit uh, obviously facing out this way. So what we'll do is we'll thread, uh, we need to thread these uh, two motor wires up through um, this little hole at the top here. Um, these holes are just uh, just there to help give the motor a bit of ventilation and help keep it cool. Um, but also they are useful for threading these wires through. I'm trying to keep this in shot, it's a bit difficult. Um, so let's grab those two wires, try and keep them close together. I just need to try and thread them up through that hole. Can be a little bit fiddly, but just a little bit of patience. You should be able to get them through. Come on. Nearly there, that's one. <laughs> there we go. That's them through. Then we just thread them through. Let's pull them through. And then the motor should just go in nice and easily into the adapter. If it doesn't go in very easily, then you can always do a little bit of like standing to try and uh, get a bit uh, better. But you don't want the motor too loose because I'll see this adapter will help um, hold it um, in place and uh, basically keep it nice and firmly in place. Um, but should be able to get it in quite easily. It's again, be quite gentle. <laughs> this one's probably gonna be one of the harder ones uh, to get in. There we go. And there we go. It goes in nice and easily. Uh, obviously, again, don't press it too hard because you don't want to damage the adapter. But as you can see, a bit of force and it goes in and that's the motor in. Uh, sometimes um, he will send the kits with the motor already fitted into the adapter, uh, but not all of them. Some Sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. Um, obviously, it is nice when the motor comes um, pre-fitted to the adapter. And um, obviously, if, if it doesn't, then obviously you can put it in yourself. But again, it's quite easy. But just want a little bit of force, um, but again, be gentle at the same time. And this and the well, the motor will go into the adapter nice and easily. Um, so that should be okay. Don't think it's broken anywhere. Um, if, it, if it is really hard to get in, um, basically you're having to use a lot of force to get it in. Um, I would recommend again just uh, doing a little bit of light sanding around the outside, so just to open up the hole ever so slightly. And then trying again. Obviously, you don't want it to go in too easily because you don't want the motor to move about uh, inside the adapter. But you want it to go in there so it's uh, held in uh, place, nice and snugly. Um, so it's going to not basically not <laughs> try and basically twist itself around in the adapter. But again, nice and easily at the same time, so you don't actually split and crack and break the adapter as it goes in. And um, so again, these these are three D printed, so they're not going to be the strongest things in the world. Um, but they should be well, they're going to be perfectly fine. 
um, obviously for this. But anyway, that's that. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to fit the gear onto the shaft of the motor. So I find the easiest way to do this, um, because you do need to trim the gear down again, obviously, is just take the gear. You want to do it uh, so that's this basically flat piece. This is just all we're going to trim off, just that flat piece. I recommend just putting it onto the shaft uh, straight away, uh, but not all of the way yet. Just put it on enough so that it's on there, but it's then enough so that you can then take your craft knife and then just trim off uh, the excess that you don't need. Um, obviously having it on the shaft a bit already it will help hold it in place um it'll be make it trust it makes the job a lot easier so then um, i don't know i probably have to do this off camera i think but just take a nice sharp craft knife then i know you can't see this but it's, it's quite self-explanatory i suppose make sure the blade's nice and tight just take the craft knife just line it up uh, on the bits you want to trim off and then you should be able to press then just press down a bit of force there we go that should be pretty much it that should be um, all nicely trimmed yeah there we go and um, that's so that's a bit of a cut off there flung all the way over but there we go obviously it's not perfectly straight so um, you could file it down a bit more actually um, which i probably will I'll file it down a little bit more it doesn't have to be perfectly um level um as long as you get most of that excess off and um, that's all you need anyway i'll quickly uh, go away i'll quickly file that down a bit more get a bit more flat and then we can come back and we can carry on fitting the kit okay so here we are sorry about that but i thought it'd be easier to do that off camera but literally just a tiny bit of filing um it's tied to a tiny tough bit i'm um, obviously again it's still not perfect and you could probably trim it down a little bit more if you wanted to um but that would be fine like that um on some of my other lima hsts that i've done some of my other lima diesels um i literally just trimmed it off left it pretty much looking like that and it was fine um, but all we need to do now is just push the gear all the way down um, onto the shaft. Um, might be a bit difficult to do. Um, just a little bit of force, just use your nails, and then push it down onto the shaft. Again, a little, little bit difficult. It should uh, go down there. <laughs> this one's not playing ball. Come on. There we go. A bit of force, and there you go. Slide it all the way down onto the shaft. And that's it, so that's all you need to do, and that'll be fine. So now all we need to do is just install it uh, inside into the original motor casing. Okay, so here we are back once again. I'm sorry about all these edits, but I'm just trying to make sure that I get everything in that I need to, um, and, and just ensuring that everything is basically as it should be, so that I uh, don't want to suddenly go and do something and it ends up going completely wrong and everything. Um, but what I decided to do in the end, instead of uh, filing down the other gear, what I've done is I actually just decided to use and the spare gear that you get sent, it's always good that you get sent to just in case you either break one or lose one or whatever. Um, but I decided to use the other gear and I've trimmed that down and I've managed to get that one a bit more level and a bit more basically, well, accurate, a bit more all the way around and compared to the other one. It's still not 100% perfect, uh, but it is a lot better uh, than the other one. So this one uh, should mean a bit of a better fit um, into when we fit it into the motor casing um, and it, it should just work a bit better. Um, obviously you don't have to do this um, your one when you trim down your gear and um, it may come out a bit better um, but it's always good to uh, maybe sometimes have a bit of practice and especially if you've maybe done several of these in installs before and you end up ruining maybe both gears in this kit for whatever reason you should have uh, like me uh, quite a lot of spares uh, lying around should you need should you need them um, but again maybe if this is your first time doing one of these installs and um, then uh, again, I maybe recommend getting a bit of practice. Maybe uh, make sure that you, before you do do uh, do your cut and trim down this gear, make sure that you've got your knife sitting perfectly level. And make sure that it's going to go through. Um, make well, definitely make sure it's nice and sharp as well. That's the important thing. And to make sure that when you that's basically when it goes through, it's going to leave a nice clean cut. It's not going to end up leaving any um, weird bits of plastic lying around that can end up jamming up the gears or anything. So you want to make sure it's all uh, nice and pristine if you can. Well, as pristine as you can make it. Um, but there we go. That should be that. So we could put that in. And yeah, instantly that's a bit of, that's a better finish. So the gear's obviously not uh, interfering uh, any uh, with anywhere anymore, I think. Um, just again, just make sure this is all lined up, um, which I believe it is. You can see obviously the motor shaft goes through there, uh, which again helps make sure it's all nice and level. Um, but that should be that. Just make sure that all of the screw holes are perfectly lined up. And they should be for the most part. So obviously, again, this is 3D printed, so it may be slightly inaccurate here or there, and by small amounts. Uh, but that's that. So now we can grab those screws. We can put them back in. 
Now you don't want to tighten them up uh, too much. Actually, well, you want to make sure they're tight, but don't tighten them up so much that you end up breaking the uh, breaking the PLA plastic that's obviously that the adapter's made of. Because if you do end up breaking it, um, then yeah, you've got a bit of a headache there. But anyway, just put that back in. That should be fine. And do the other side. Put the screw in. Tighten it up. Do it so it's tight, but again, not too tight. Do the other side a bit more. There we go, and that should be fine. And that should be nice and secure. Yeah, it's not loose or anything. So let's give the wheels a quick turn to make sure that that's all okay. And yes, it is. So that's it. That's the kit fitted. That's all we need to do. So one, I suppose one thing we could do if you wanted to at this point, and I've actually done it in the past. If you, want, if you wanted to, you could just connect up, uh, make quick, uh, if you want to connect up a DC controller to these two wires or something, just a quick power source, uh, just to give the motor some power, just make sure it works, make sure you're happy, and then we can start uh, reassembling the model. So that's what we can do now. So what we do, grab the chassis. Obviously what all we need to do is just drop the bogey back in there, uh, solder all of the relevant wires back on, uh, obviously put the bogey frame back on as well. And that should be it. Uh, so I'll go away, I'll quickly reassemble the model, and then we can give her a test and see how she performs now. Okay, so here we are. So we've now got the uh, model onto the track. Um, obviously I haven't put the body back on yet, so we won't do that until we're sure that everything's okay and to ensure that everything's basically performing as it should be. Now, one thing to note here is obviously because you have um, changed the motor in this model, you will need to run the model in again, because obviously, yes, the mechanism itself, like all of the gearing and all the pickups will be run in, Obviously, the motor won't be running, so you will need to give them all um, a period of running in, in each direction, just to run the motor in, uh, just to get it used to running and everything. So you don't really want to suddenly go straight away after doing this upgrade. You don't want to suddenly couple the model up to loads of coaches or wagons or whatever and start putting it under loads of strain straight away. Just treat it as a brand new model and just give it the usual running in, just to make sure everything's okay, ensure that uh, everything's running as it should be, and then you can basically go from there. So obviously... The motor will need running in. Um, I have already given it off camera a bit of running in each direction just to make sure that she's definitely okay. But I will definitely give it a bit more just to make just to double check that she is happy running and that everything is as it should be. But anyway, let's give her a test and see what she's like. So I think we're going in reverse at the moment. Yeah, not too bad in the other direction. Oh, she's cut out. That's fair enough. There we go. So I have added a few extra pickups to the model, but um, she's still only picking up from two wheels from one rail, so she might still might not be quite as reliable as she could be. But yeah, overall, <laughs> despite the cutting out, it's not too bad. So brilliant. So as we can see, that's definitely been a success, and she's definitely quieter than what she was before. Definitely smoother. So definitely worth doing the upgrade, I think. So what we'll do now is we'll put the body back on, put some coaches with her, we'll get the other power car that I run her with with her as well, and we'll get her running around the layout. Okay, so there we are. As you can see, the body shell's back on. Obviously, literally a five-second job for me because I haven't got to put any of the screws back in. But obviously, you, you may differ. You may not have removed any of the screw lugs or anything from the inside. Um, but still, nice and easy to get the bodies on and off these. I'm sort of seeing because they are quite, well, they are very basic, but still obviously very reliable and very robust. Now, I haven't put a full rig of coaches on. I've only put uh, four coaches on. So um, obviously not full length, but we've still got a 2 plus 4 Slandor set, which obviously did happen for a period of time on the Great Western Network. So in terms of realism, perfectly fine. Um, maybe not with the power car running numbers, but certainly in terms of the formation, perfectly fine. Um, I haven't uh, done any of the programming on the Tacoda yet, so, so I haven't done any, any programming of um, CVs 2, 5 or 6 yet or anything. Um, obviously, again, I would recommend that, um, if, if you, especially if you're running it on DCC, and that you're using a decoder that can that you can basically change uh, CVs two, five, and six on. Um, some that can't obviously Hornby, Hornby's decoders. You can't do that on. So I certainly recommend. Well, I wouldn't recommend using Hornby decoders full stop if you can. Um, but I definitely wouldn't recommend using them with these motors. Um, obviously, if you're going to, if you you can do it, but you just uh, can't choose um, how much voltage you um, supply the motor at uh, the mid speed and max speed and stuff. Um, which is um, quite important for these, um, in my opinion, anyway. 
Um, I haven't done, but anyway, I haven't done any programming um, with the Trainomatic decoder that I've got on here um, on this model um, yet with those CVs, um, which will be fine for testing. Um, obviously, once I've, obviously after this video, at some point I will uh, go and do it. It's just to um, help uh, basically so that I don't um, accidentally pr um, put too much voltage to the motor for a too long a period of time. Um, again, for this video, it'll be fine. And obviously, being a Trainomatic decoder, it's going to perform well anyway because they are very good decoders and they are very well priced as well. But anyway, without further ado, let's get her running and see what she's like. It won't go, won't go overly fast, don't give her too much power. So as you can see, she's running very well. Obviously, we've still got that typical Lima uh, noise from the gearing, but she's definitely quieter uh, compared to how she would have been with one of the original Ringfield motors, well, one of the original Pancake motors, which I will show you, actually. I think it'll be quite good. So, um, once, we've, uh, once we've had a good run around the layout of these coaches, and she's uh, nice and warmed up, I will do a comparison for you. I'll get one of my HSCs that still has one of the original Pancake motors in it, so that you can see the difference with the smoothness and the noise and stuff. But yeah, overall, as we can see, running very well. Definitely worth doing these upgrades, I think. Obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I do recommend doing them. They do uh, definitely give, allow the model to uh, give you some better performance, uh, certainly at the lower speeds as well. But yeah, fantastic. Okay, so very quickly before we end, we'll just do a quick comparison between the power car that we've just done that's got the upgraded CD motor, and I'll compare it for you with a power car that hasn't uh, been upgraded with a CD motor yet, uh, just so you can uh, get a good idea of basically the difference between, uh, obviously, again, a motor that's been upgraded and one of the original ones, so you can see what the differences are. So obviously, this is the power car that we've just done, so I'll just give, you a, give it a quick run again for you, just so you can see um, how she runs, uh, how smooth she is, and how quiet she is. So you can see they're running on nice and slowly, nice and smooth and very quiet as well. And we'll do the other direction, go a bit faster this time. So yeah, hopefully you can see there how good it is to do these upgrades. Nice and smooth, consistent, nice and quiet. <laughs> so very, very good. So obviously that's the one with the upgraded motor. So if I just take her off and I grab another power car, so this is 43140, and this one, this power car, still has the original Lima Pancake motor. Now it's exactly the same um, mechanism inside, so, well, I say same mechanism, um, it's exactly the same decoder in this one that I've hardwired into this one, using the same method as the other one, so 8-pin socket I've put in there, trainer massive decoder in there, um, same number of pickups as well, so we've still got the usual and factory Lima pickups, so two wheels, I believe it's these two wheels here, and the two wheels on the other side, but then I've also added my own pickups again uh, to these two wheels as well, which, is, uh, which I also did um, with the other one as well, and it's what I do with all of my Lima HSTs as well, uh, just to help give them a bit a slightly better, better performance. But obviously the main difference is this one, is it hasn't got an upgraded motor in it yet. So just I uh, slept that power car, and we'll give her a wiggle, so I hope you can see the difference. So you can immediately notice there, now she has been ran quite recently, so she's not bone dry or very uh, cold or tired or anything. But hopefully you can see there the difference. And again, same decoder and everything, same setup, but much noisier, much rougher, still quite smooth, but she definitely can't uh, run quite as slowly or as smoothly um, as the other power car. So I'm hoping that gives you an idea, idea that we'll get it going a bit faster so you can see. So hopefully you can notice there, if I just bring her back again, much, much noisier compared to the other power car. So there we are. So hopefully that gives you a good idea 
of the difference between the original power car um, with the original mechanism compared to a power car or well a model that's been upgraded with a better and newer star motor so hopefully you found this video um, enjoyable hopefully you find it useful and um, hopefully um, it will give you guys um, if you want to a bit of um, more knowledge and so give you a bit more confidence um, to upgrade any of your Lima models um, with better motors if you want to uh, so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one